Now, around five or so years ago, the launch of a new C-segment manual front-wheel drive hot hatchback was always an exciting, but not particularly interesting exercise. At the time, there were cars like the Mark 7.5 Golf GTI, Hyundai had their brilliant i30N, and of course, Honda's FK8 Civic Type R was just a revelation. In fact, all three were so good, it just didn't leave any space for anything even slightly underbaked to be given a chance. Unfortunately, that's where Ford found this fourth generation Focus ST. We love the engine and we love the handling, but all together as a package, it just wasn't enough to compete. However, five years has been a long time. And in that time, Honda Civic Type R has gone up in price. The Honda i30N can be quite tricky to get a hold of. And of course, well, Volkswagen's GTI is kind of nowhere at the moment, leaving plenty of space for this new Focus ST to flourish. On paper, the latest ST doesn't look that different from the model that was launched back in 2018. It's got the same turbocharged 2.3 litre four cylinder engine matched to a six speed manual transmission. There's also a seven speed automatic option as well. Drive is sent to the front wheels with some help from a limited slip differential. And the chassis is also largely unchanged with all the UK models coming with electronically controlled variable dampers. And these sit within a barely mainstream McPherson strut front and multi-link rear suspension design. There are some changes though, such as the slick new LED headlights, a new grille shape, and this very vibrant shade of green. But this particular car has a very interesting new 3,000 pound track pack fitted, which, trust me, is the game changer. Now, the most interesting part of the track pack is actually all focused around here. The 19 inch wheel is the same size as a standard ST, but the wheels are now flow formed, which means they're about 10% lighter. They're also wrapped in a Pirelli P0 tyre, replacing the previous PS4s. Now, not so subtly hiding behind the wheels are a set of four pop Brembos on larger 363 millimeter discs. But the bit that you can't see is the fact that Ford has replaced the electrically adjustable dampers of the standard ST for a new set of KW coilovers. If you're wondering why this makes such a difference, the short answer is dampers can completely change how a car rides and handles. The better quality the units, the greater the bandwidth they can operate. And in this case, the dampers are manually adjustable with some tools that Ford handily supplies alongside. There's a total of 16 levels of adjustment for compression and 12 for rebound and the ride height's adjustable too, with the factory setup sitting 10 mil lower than standard. Now, realistically, few, if any of us, are going to spend hours finally honing the suspension settings with the spanner. Yet while it's nice that the option's there, the real boon of this type of high-end chassis hardware is felt the instant you drop the clutch. Now, let's get one thing straight. The Focus ST track pack is not <laughs> a softly sprung car, but speed things up a bit and things get much better. In fact, the payoff for that is really impressive control and compliance at high speeds, and it allows you to tack bends much, much more intensely than you would on a standard one. In fact, we'd go so far as to say that this thing is better over the road than the Civic Type R, than the Hyundai i30N, no, no question. And there are other payoffs with the track pack as well. Because everything on the front end is just that little bit lighter, wheels, suspension towers, etc., the whole thing just has that little bit more precision. The steering's sharper, the brakes have more feel, and because of the combination of those Pirelli P0s and four-pop Brembos, well, the braking performance is, uh... <laughs> good. Now, I think it's time we talk about the elephant in the room here. And unfortunately, when it comes to the Focus, it's the engine and gearbox. Compared to a Honda Civic Type R, it's just not that good. Unfortunately, the 2.3-litre turbo EcoBoost that it uses is the same sort of engine that they put in overseas market Ford Rangers and even in the Ford Bronco and it means that it just doesn't have a huge amount of sparkle to it. This kind of just feels like a heavily turbocharged four cylinder. Still, it sounds pretty good. And while the gearbox is a bit notchy and doesn't love to be rushed in the same way that Honda's fantastic unit does, do you know what? It's still plenty good enough. But more importantly, it feels like a hot hatch turbo powertrain in the way that it spools up, in the way that it's got a bit of turbo lag, and in the way that, whoa, <laughs> if you really let go, it'll give you something back. Stick the car into sports mode and you'll find that the throttle mapping is super aggressive, but the gap between the throttle body's opening and power being extracted can be a bit sluggish in the middle, portraying its rather utilitarian roots. Power is pretty bang on for the class at 276 brake horsepower, which is about the same as you'll find in a Hyundai i30N and a few less than a Golf GTI Club Sport, but it's a fair chunk behind a modern Civic Type R. As such, the 0 to 62 time is only okay at 5.7 seconds, and unless the turbo is already wound up, you'll find its more responsive rivals will leave the Ford a little vulnerable in gear. It's worth noting a few things about the handling too. While the front end is so much more eager than the standard model, the steering still feels a little bit too fast, and it's not quite accurate enough to give you full confidence when turning into a corner. This seems to apply both on road and track. 
compared to the system you'll find in a new Civic, it's nowhere. And while Hyundai's rack doesn't have any more feel, its more measured responses give you that little bit more confidence. But then this is where the subjective comes in, because while the ST Track Pack isn't as objectively good as many of its main rivals, it feels like a hot hatchback of the old school, which depending on your preferences is either a very good or very bad attribute. Now, as with all Focus STs, there are various driving modes, but you don't really need to know much about them, aside than to say that Sport is good. It'll blip the throttle for you, sharpen the throttle response, and <laughs> blow some bubbles on the exhaust if that's your thing. Because the damp is a passive though, it doesn't make any effect to the ride quality or the handling which is actually a good thing because it means that Ford's engineers have really been able to focus on the one setup, regardless of the modes. And while some might miss the previous Recaro seats of this facelift model, the basics are absolutely sound. Driving position is good, visibility is good, and the new seats, oh, they're fantastic, but they do kind of look like Christmas trees to me. Actually, do you know what this car feels like? It feels like a proper old school hot hatchback. Torque steer, bouncy ride, bad interior quality and all. It's not as polished as a Honda Civic Type R, but it doesn't really need to be, because you know what? This is a cracking hot hatch. <laughs> and I'm gonna be really sad when they go. <laughs> you see, a modern Type R, beyond its near 50,000 pound price tag, kinda drives like a super touring car for the road and not a hot hatchback, whereas the ST does. With the trackback fitted, the ST itself is knocking on the door of nearly 40,000 pounds, which is a lot less than the Honda, but still a large number. Yet, if you actually look around the competition, it's roughly around the same as you'll pay for a modern Golf GTI Club Sport, with the i30N's 35k price point being an exception to the rule, if you can get hold of one, that is. So the thing is, right, hot hatchbacks like this are a bit of an endangered species, and as we know, Ford's going all electric, which means that there's not going to be another Focus ST like it. So, if you're into hot hatchbacks, you'll really like this. If you're into Ford hot hatchbacks, well, stop what you're doing and buy one right now before it's too late.